So this video is related to a newly created workshop Implement Reactive Endpoints with Java, Quarkus, Microprofile and deploy the entire example to Red Hat OpenShift. By the way, the link to this workshop you find in the description below. The source code of the project itself is open sourced in the Cloud Native Starter project. You maybe already know that's related to microservices. That's the second video. We're starting with exercise four to implement our own microservice, the My Web API microservice. You know, the Web API microservice implements a backend for frontend pattern. And we want to implement ourselves this microservice to understand the reactive REST endpoint implementation. We will invoke the REST endpoint here with a curl command in a cloud shell. So, and we need six classes to implement that microservice. And in lab four, we are currently in, we will create two of these classes. We will start from scratch with a project. We will get a Quarkus getting started project for synchronous endpoints. That's the fruit example. So <clears throat> that is what I said before. Yeah, then we will create the classes. The important stuff for the asynchronous implementation for the reactive endpoints is a completion stage and completable future. We will going to create a Quarkus project right now to start with our microservice. We're using the Cloud Shell like we did in the last video for the setup. So <clears throat> we will download the project for the Quarkus. Maybe I have to speed up the video here. So the download of the project was successful. And now we're going into the folder. Yeah, just take a look where it is. So CD rest. And then we can see here, that's the pom file, that's the project file. Okay. Now we can start the Quarkus sample here in uh, development mode. Maybe I have to speed up the video also here. So Quarkus is running. We create a new session to access our running example. The URL for that is in our documentation of the workshop. We copy it. We wait until the session is here and then can import it and yeah. We can see here is a hello and it works. Um, we're going to the project where the source code is to take a look at the source code as promised for the implementation of the synchronous REST endpoint. Maybe you're also, are well, you already familiar with the synchronous implementation? So then it's here what you expect. We have JAX-RS to implement the synchronous REST endpoint here with path, get, produce, and so on. And that was the return value we got when we invoked our sample. So the next step is we will create the two first needed classes for our example. That is the articles class. So here, that's the class we will create and the articles resource class. And then we will just copy and paste the given source code. Oh, that's easy programming here. Uh, and um, we're using nano in our situation. I like Nano um, on our Cloud Shell because 
it is easier to remember all of the commands than in VI. I do not remember every command of the uh, VI. So uh, we just copy and paste the source code and save it. And uh, so we also have to open up the next one. Article resource class. The same is here. Copy and paste the source code. Save it. Okay, we are done with that. Uh, that's easy for programming. <laughs> Just copy and paste. It's more to understand all these uh, stuff. And um, yeah, we start once again our server to uh, compile the newly created source code. And later on, we will um, access our articles REST API with the URL you see here. Okay, um, starting, I could just stop here. The server, I guess, uh, the, the restart is a little bit faster. Maybe I, I also speed up the video. So we have the running Quarkus here. We're going back to our session and invoke our articles. Yeah, there is a prepared return value, a nice prepared return value. There's a super awesome article from Niklas Heidloff, uh, who creates the workshop. Yeah, thanks Niklas for the super awesome article. So, and you see it works. And now it's time to understand the implementation. The big question, what is now the big difference between a synchronous endpoint and an asynchronous endpoint uh, for the reactive stuff? You see, first it seems very, very, very similar like the synchronous uh, endpoint. The big difference is that we will return here a stage and not an object itself, like uh, maybe normally directly the Java response, uh, uh, JSON, uh, something in a JSON format and, and things like that. But that's um, completion stage so that our client can react later on on the asynchronous information and sees, ah, yeah, when the stage, when when it happens, when it's complete. So that means, um, so uh, a stage has different possibilities to uh, give information about this, uh, the stage and working through the task, the method has to do. Here we have to get the articles. So, <clears throat> In our situation, that's a, um, a sample, we will directly create a completable future as a complete, uh, as a completion stage return value. So that we do not block the client for working. So that's the directly uh, returned. And inside, we will start with doing the task. We start with supplement asynchronous tasks. In the first task here, what we will do, uh, we will invoke methods. And this will be done with the Lambda functionality in, in Java. So we will invoke um, a function. Here, in this function, we're going to uh, implement the get articles. Currently, it's um, the article, the sample article, which is inside the class itself. So we will return it and then we apply the next step to the task, what we want to do. Yeah. So, uh, so that means we can chain different um, responsibilities to do. Maybe we want to uh, convert data and things like that. In our situation, we will format the data, we will get uh, information, and then we will um, create later on, you will see in the next part, a um, JSON array, for example. Yeah, And when everything is complete, yeah, 
it provides the information. Yeah, here it's complete. This task is complete, and then that's the response information. And what's what's there? So then, yeah, and everything is working here. You can see what uh, is done here inside the uh, then apply part here for the uh, completable future. So what I said with the JSON array articles as a JSON building this and response. Yeah, but in sometimes we have problems and that's also happens in the asynchronous world. And when we, for example, do not get the articles values, maybe we have an invalid input parameter like we we're seeing here. Um, how do we handle that? And in this situation, it's not handled like in synchronous code. It's handled not with a catch. Normally, you, you throw an exception and then you catch the exception. In this situation, it's that it belongs also to the, the stage. Yeah. Information. So, what happens here? So, exceptionally, exceptionally, maybe there is a problem. And when there is a problem, how do we handle this? And this is caught. That's more or less, that's our uh, catch. Yeah. And when we throw here our exception, we can catch the exception here and doing the task we need. If no uh, exception happens, you there will be uh, no problem. And that is what we will respond later when the state is finished. In our situation here, when we directly remove the comments and if the code would run, we directly run in an exception, we catch the exception and we provide a meaningful return value for our client. So, that's what it was in the first step. We did the synchronous sample and implement the first two classes of our microservice. The next we will see then we will no longer only get the article, the super awesome article from Nicholas. We will get the articles directly from the article service inside our example running on OpenShift. See you. Bye.